Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Bernardo the Barber, and uh, today I wanted to share something with you. Today is uh, September 21st, 2017. Uh, the reason why I say the time and date in my video messages is because I want to be able to come back a year from now as a uh, learning experience and see the changes that God has done in my life. Uh, today I want to share something with you that I believe we all need to hear. And uh, with that being said, the title of this video is uh, John the Baptist in the Flesh. And before I start getting into my testimony of you know what happened today, I'm going to read a scripture to you and then I'll tell you a little story about today. So today I'm going to start off this video with prayer. Father, we uh, come to you in prayer today, Father, and I just give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. I thank you for all your wisdom, for all your knowledge, for all your understandings, Father. I thank you for all the visuals you give me, for the Spirit speaking to me, Father, for your Spirit speaking to me, Father. I thank you for these things because I'm able to share with the world, with your children, the things that happened in my life as a witness, as a testimony. And I pray, Father, that today you continue to give me your visuals, you continue to give me your wisdom, you continue to give me your knowledge and your understanding. Allow it to be your words and not mine, Father. And allow us to stay focused on you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So we're going to start off with the story, okay? Scripture says, uh, Scripture says in 1 John 1, 6 through 7 says, If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. This morning I woke up and, uh, you know, I always feel like in my heart I have to, with my walk with Christ, I feel like if I'm not reaching someone a day, if I'm not putting out a Bible scripture a day, if I'm not doing something motivational for the day, for the love of Jesus Christ, then there's something inside of me that, that panics and anxiety begins to overfill me and I begin to get worried and this morning, as time was ticking, I had to be at work at 10. And, you know, I was up early, and so I decided to go a different direction today. And before I left, I asked God, I said, God, I haven't heard from you in a few days. You haven't spoke to me in a few days. I feel like not necessarily I abandoned you or you didn't abandon me, but maybe we've just been too busy for each other. And I'm leaving the house and I'm thinking, you know, I need something motivational. I need to hear something on the radio. I need to find some kind of Bible scripture. I need to find something that, that will uplift me for today. And as time began to get closer, it was about 9.45. And I had to be at work at 10. And I said, you know what, maybe I can find something in the car to listen to. And I begin to drive. And as I begin to drive, I go a different direction. And in that direction, I see a man. I see a man standing on the side of the road. And as I see him on the side of the road, he's, uh, the first time I passed him, he's struggling trying to take his pants off. He did have some shorts underneath, but he's struggling to take some pants off. And I remember him just pulling the shorts up and just kind of struggling. The first time I crossed him, we made eye contact. And even though my, my car has tinted windows, I felt like there was a connection there and I just kind of ignored it and I said well God I said I gotta be at work at 10 and I really don't have time to speak to this young man I really don't have time to waste because I'm busy today and in that same moment I just drove past him but there was a peace inside of my heart that wouldn't sit still and so I turned around I said you know what I'm gonna come back so I came back and I saw him there again. Sure enough, I was too afraid and I was too scared to stop. I just kept on driving. I said, nah, I gotta get to work. And as I began to drive, 
I drove past him and the moment that I drove past him it's like he looked up and, and we we made eye contact again and I kept on I kept on driving and before I got to the loop over here off of Gimma Road I said you know what I can't I can't just keep driving I have to turn around I gotta try I gotta try something and as I began to drive I I drove back and I was headed back into his direction and I could tell that he was in distress and he was in despair and he was waving his hands all over the place and riding on his legs and, and so on. And so I, I turned back and I began to say, I said, God, I can't cast out demons. I began to think about Legion and how he had all the demons in him. I said, God, I can't walk up to that man and cast out demons. I just, I just, I just don't believe that I can do that. And so, and so I come back up the road and as I'm coming up the road, I see another, I see another fellow brother that I know. And as I'm driving by, this brother is, is, is speaking with a young man. And when I drove by, I looked, at, I looked at the brother's face and I was like, man, you know, maybe he's got it under control. But then I drove by and I felt like the spirit spoke to me. Maybe the brother didn't have it under control. And when I say it, I'm talking about my brother in Christ. And even though I knew him, I, I thought to myself, I said, well, I guess I better stop, see what's going on. And so I stop, and as I stop and I park on the side of the building, I begin to, I begin to walk in the direction where they, were, where they were at. I didn't see the young man there anymore, the, the, my brother in Christ, and he was walking back into the door. So I called him by his name, and I said, hey. And he turned around, and he goes, hey, Bernardo. What are you doing? And I said, oh, nothing much, man. You know, just headed to work. And he said, and I said, well, you got a minute? He said, yeah, come on in. So the homeless guy, he's standing out there in the corner doing whatever he's doing. But before I approach him, I wanted to make sure that I got all the detail outlined and make sure that I knew what I was getting myself into. And so I go inside and I begin to talk to my brother in Christ and I asked him, I said, hey, man, what's going on with this man outside? And he says, oh, man, you know, I just, you know, I was just trying to, in other words, I guess he was trying to get him away from his property because it's bad for business, which I understand. And being, being a business owner, I understand, you know, where he's coming from. And in this moment, I'm thinking to myself, the Spirit's speaking to me. I don't want to judge anybody. I don't want to point fingers at him. I don't want to point fingers at the homeless man. So I just begin to listen and I begin to understand what's going on in, in this situation. And he says, yeah, the guy walked up to me and was trying to shake my hand. He said, but, you know, he had boogers coming out of his nose and had snot all over his, had snot all over his mustache. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking to myself like, yeah, brother, you're probably right, man. I probably wouldn't want to touch him either. And he said, man, I just kind of I just kind of walked away and just left and just left him there. I said, "Oh, okay." And he goes, "Yeah, man, his name is his name is Danny." And I said, "All right." I said, "Cool, man." And uh I said, "Well, man, I'm about to go across the street." I said, "If you could." I said, "Just keep an eye on me." I said, "But uh I'm going to go across across the street and try to maybe get him away from your business and that way you don't have to to deal with him distracting people and causing a scene and I definitely don't want the Longview Police Department to show up and have to take this poor man to jail. And so God put it in my heart and I said, you know, I'm going to drive around the corner. I'm going to park across the street from the car wash. I walked across the street, well, I parked my car across the street from the car wash. And uh, I said, hey, Danny. And in a minute I said, hey, Danny, he looked up and he was like looking all over the place. And I said, I remember saying, Lord, be with me. And in that same moment, some woman had parked up next to him. And uh, I guess he thought she had called his name. So I called his name again. I said, hey, Danny. And then he, he looked up and looked at me. And he picks up his bag. And he starts walking real fast and starts crossing the street. And he's crossing the street. I'm just sitting here in prayer, just asking God to help me. And the minute he crosses the street, he comes over there to me. And he's like, oh, hey, 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 man, what's up, man? What, what are you doing? And I said, not much, Danny, what's going on? And he just kind of looked at me, kind of puzzled, like if, I, like if I knew him. And he goes, he goes, man, how you been? And I said, man, I've been good. How are you doing, Danny? And he goes, man, I, I, I'm, doing, I'm doing all right, man, I'm doing all right. 
And in that moment, I knew he realized like something clicked in his head and he said, he said, do I know you? <laughs> I just kind of laughed and I said, no, man, I don't, I don't think you do. I said, but uh, I said, my name is Bernardo. And uh, I said, what's going on? Oh, man, nothing, you know, and nothing, man. And he just kind of started to begin to talk. And as he began to talk, I could tell he was talking, but I could tell that he was drifting off into different, three different conversations. And then he started rapping and singing. And I said, man, I said, uh, I said, what are you doing, man? It looked like you were drawing on your leg or something. He said, oh, man, I was just writing scripture. I'm writing scripture, man. I, I love to write scripture. And, and, and scripture, you know, scripture helps me. And I, I, I like Jesus. And, and Jesus helps me. And I, I like writing scripture. And then he goes off into freestyling into some music and just, just, just rapping. And I could tell that he's got some kind of doodle on his leg and, and so on. And I began to... I began to talk to him and I said, man, well, well, what's going on? And he's like, oh, nothing, man. I just, I just like music. And have you ever heard of this? And have you ever heard of that? And da, 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 da. Now in the midst of this conversation, after this video, I will post a video of this young man so you can understand where I'm coming from. I just don't know how to loop this in into this live feed. But in his message that he was talking, he was talking about the darkness. He was talking about the light. And he reminded me that if we all went back to the beginning, if we all went back to the beginning that was taught, and when he was talking in these, in these mixed code conversation, I was picking up bits and pieces as he, was, as he was talking. But you have to listen very carefully to the audio. You have to listen very, very carefully. And so in that moment, I told myself, I said, you know, all this man needs is really some love some attention, someone to pull over or speak to him, figure out what's going on in his life. Now, I'm not saying to do that with every homeless man. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that when God speaks to you, when God tells you to stop and pull over, you stop and you pull over. Now, this man right here reminded me of something. He reminded me of love. And he said, he, he said the word love, and he talked about Rebecca. And he talked about if we, he said something, if we went back to the principles in the beginning and if, and if we would just live out what we were taught in the beginning. And I was so confused by what he was saying, but it, it just sounded so beautiful to be listening to what he was saying in, in, this, code, in this code word that he was talking. And so after, I, after about 15 minutes of speaking to him, I finally decided to walk off and I, and I, well, I finally decided to say, hey man, you know, uh, I, gotta, I gotta get going back to work. And he was sitting here, the last words that he, that he said to me was, the last words that he said to me, he, was, he said, I look forward to seeing you in the future. Now if, I'm, now if I'm blown away by that when he says, I look forward to seeing you in the future, the moment that I was speaking to this man the minute that I began to talk to him, I honestly felt like I was in the presence of John the Baptist. Now, if you're not familiar with who John the Baptist is, John the Baptist is the guy who, who came before Christ, who was paving the way, who was showing people, who was teaching people who, who Jesus Christ was going to be. And in the same moment, it, it hit me. I got into the car. I looked up... I looked up uh, I looked up in the Bible app, uh, I looked up uh, 1 John, because that's what came to my mind, that's what God put in my, in my spirit. And so I look up 1 John, and I'm sitting here remembering the conversation that me and, me and, and uh, Danny had, and this is, what, this is what God put on my heart. He says, you go into the info, you kind of read the, the, the book of 1 John, you go into the info and you can find this right here. So it says, uh, it says, it says, some of them had abandoned faith in, in Jesus the Messiah as it had first been taught to them. Now to remember, Danny the homeless man, he said, if we went back to the beginning to what we were taught, which we were taught how to love, we were taught how to love each other, how to not judge people, regardless if they have snot on their nose, regardless of whatever it is. You know, when he walked up, when he walked up to me and he said, what's up, man? He, he's like, how you been? 
and I remember, and I remember my brother in Christ told me, he said, man, he's got snot on his nose. He's got snot on his mustache. And in that same moment, when he walked up to me to give me a hug, I was like, "Uh, uh, don't do it. Uh, but I had to remind myself like, this isn't about me. This isn't about me. And I had to put that flesh away. And I said, Hey man, you know what? Yeah, man, come here. Give me a hug. This shirt can be washed. All this can be replaced. But the love that we show that person today, that, that can change your whole life forever. And so as I was looking up, as I was looking up uh, in the information on the Bible, he says, so, so John, it says, someone who was close to this, com to this community and who had been an eyewitness of Jesus wrote to reassure them of what they had heard from the beginning. The author, it says, the letter testifies to the reality of the Messiah's coming in the flesh, reassuring the believers that they have full access to the truth. It emphasizes godly living and practical caring as the signs of those who genuinely know God. Now, when it says the signs of those who genuinely know God, I begin to search scripture and I come across these scriptures. And John, John, 1 John 2, 6 says this, and this is a reminder of us to not judge others, but it says, whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. That's 1 John 2, 6. So if we claim to have Jesus Christ in our lives, and if we claim to be Christians, and if we claim to go to the church, and we claim to do this and do that, then how come we can't love someone who's on the street? How come we can't hug them regardless if they have snot coming out of their nose? How come we can't do that? If 1 John reminds us, 1 John 2, 2 says, whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. That means that whatever we're doing in the flesh, whatever selfish desires we have going on within us, we have to learn to put that down and love like Jesus did. John, 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, come not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. And to me, you know, we gotta, we gotta be like, like Christ. We gotta be able to accept people for who they are. We can't just judge that person for who they are. And later on today, this is, this is something that's so beautiful. I was reminded to remind you all that regardless of someone's appearance, regardless of what they look like, if you remember Saddam, S Saddam and Gomorrah, God destroyed that city. But when he destroyed that city, he sent angels into the earth to go out. And I believe it was, uh, it was Lot who, he, who they sent in to, to get out Lot and his wife and the children. Now, if God can send those angels to Saddam and Gomorrah, and if we're sitting here walking around Longview, Texas, and we're crossing the loop and, and God sends us someone, an angel who's on earth, who, who is who is maybe giving us a test to see if we're going to pay attention or we're just going to ignore that person. It is our job to, to pass that test with colors. It is our job to, regardless about how busy our schedule is, it's our job to reach out to that person. Even if it is a handshake, even if it does take five minutes of our life, it doesn't matter. Our job is to be like Christ. And later on today, my, my brother in Christ, he, come, he came in today, and as he came in today, you know, he, he just kind of, he said, man, Bernardo, you're, you're, a, good, you're a good guy. <laughs> and I just kind of laughed at him, and I said, man, I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. And he said, man, you're, you're a good guy. You allow me to see things in a different perspective. I said, hey, man, it ain't, I said, it ain't me, man. It's all, it's all God. It's, it's what God does through me. And I said, I completely understand where you're coming from. And I love the fact that he came in. And I love the fact that he, that he acknowledged, that he understood, that the conviction, that the conviction that he felt inside his heart, I'm glad that I, I personally did not have to say anything to him. He came in, he acknowledged, he, he said, you know what? 
I, I should have took time out of my day to, to shake his hand. I should have took time out of my day, regardless of what he looked like, I should have, I should have done this. And I love the fact that he recognized that, but the only reason why he recognized that is because of the conviction of the love of Jesus Christ. And today, my prayer would be that if you, that if, that if you haven't yet established a relationship with Jesus Christ, and maybe you don't feel convictions for what you're doing, if you can walk into this world and, and you can continue to sin and feel no conviction, maybe it's time to take a step back and look at yourself and, and maybe maybe evaluate your relationship with Christ and, and did you really give your life to Christ? Because when we when we fully give our life to Christ, God uses us here on earth as his vessel. God uses us here on earth as his messengers. God uses us here on earth to, to be able to be the light to those who are lost so they can be found. And it's just a daily reminder in scripture. And so today I'll, I'll, end, this, I'll end this video with this. I'll end this video with 1 John 4.19. And it says, We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us the command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. 1 John 4.19 And I just pray that the next time you see someone or the next time you feel like God has placed it in your life to reach out and talk to someone, do not be afraid because God is with you always. He's with you from the beginning. He's with you to the end. And today was a daily reminder that sometimes, you know, we might, we might come across Jesus himself. We might come across John the Baptist himself. We might come across, you know, the Apostle Paul himself. We never know who we're going to come across. But it is our job to be Christians. It is, it is, our job as Christians is to love one another unconditionally. I'm going to finish. I'm going to, I'm going to read this scripture to you and I'll, and I'll end this video with prayer. First, uh, First, uh, First John three sixteen says, "This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possession and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, do not let us love with our words." or speech but with actions and in truth and today is a reminder to not just walk around and proclaim that we're Christians to not walk around and say that we know Christ to not walk around and say that we go to church on Sundays today it is our job to walk out what we preach and even though we fail it is our job to get back up and so today, I end this video with prayer. Father, I just come to you in prayer today, and I give you all glory, and I give you all praise. I thank you for speaking me, to me today, Father, to be able to speak to, to these people watching this video, Father. And I just pray that, that you just touch their hearts, Father. And when they speak out and cry out to you, Father, that you're there to show them a sign, just as you showed me a sign today, Father. That when I am in need and when I am hungry, I know that you will never leave me without. I know that you will always lead me. I know that you will always guide me. And I know that you will always feed me. When I am thirsty, you will give me water to drink. And I pray today, Father, for, for those out there who are brothers and sisters of Christ, who are the body of Christ, I pray that today be a reminder that we may not judge anybody or hold anybody to a lower or higher standard of, than, of us, Father but that we're able to see Christ in them just as you see Christ in us, Father. And I pray, Father, that you be with us in everything that we do throughout our life, Father. And it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all.